Hi, welcome to this lesson where we're going to take a look at how to deal with resistors connected in parallel, how to calculate the total resistance, how to use it. Let's start by making sure we can recognize things connected in parallel. Here we have two bulbs connected in parallel and all of these circuits show the same thing. They all show the two bulbs in parallel connected to a cell. Take a look at them, make sure you understand that they are equivalent. When we look at actual wiring, it can be quite complicated, but all these three diagrams represent two bulbs connected in parallel to a cell. So make sure you can recognize parallel connections when you look at wiring. OK, to help us with the mathematics, let's invent a circuit three resistors in parallel. We're going to apply 20 volts and let's suppose that causes a current of 10 amps to go through the top wire. Because they're in parallel the 10 amps will split three ways and at the bottom the three separate currents combine and return to the supply. If the resistors are equal the currents would be equal. For example 3.3 recurring amps in each resistor. But of course in general the resistances are not equal. Let's put some data in to help us see what's going on. Let's say the first resistor has a resistance of R1, the second one R2, third one R3. Let's call the current through the first resistor I1. Let's suppose it's 2 amps. I2 is 5 amps. I3 is 3 amps you will note that the currents add up to the original 10 amps. 2 plus 5 plus 3 amps is 10 amps. The 10 amps are split three ways. The other point to note is that each resistor has the same potential difference across it. They each have 20 volts applied to the ends. And it's true of components in parallel. Whenever you have components in parallel, each component has the same voltage, the same potential difference across it as all the others. I've added the actual resistance values here. We can work them out because we have enough data. So how big is resistor 1, R1? Well, R is V over I, that's the definition. So to work out R1, divide the voltage across it by the current through it. 20 volts across it, 2 amps through it. 20 over 2 is 10 ohms. Resistor 2, 20 volts and 5 amps. 20 over 5 is 4 ohms. Resistor 3, 20 volts across it, 3 amps. It's 6 and 2 thirds ohms. But we don't like giving fractions as final answers because it sounds like we know the answer exactly. There's always some experimental error. Let's give the answer to two significant figures here. 6.7 ohms. So what we've got is a set of three resistors, 10 ohms, 4 ohms, 6.7 ohms, connected to a 20 volt supply and the resistors allow 10 amps to flow before the current splits up and recombines and 10 amps goes back. I've drawn a dotted box around the three resistors in parallel and the question is what is the total resistance of the three resistors in parallel? That means what would be the value of the single resistor that I could use to replace those three in parallel and still get the same current, 10 amps. And I've shown that on the bottom diagram. So if I, I apply 20 volts to a single resistor, which I've called RT, resistance total, uh, 20 volts applied to RT, we want it also to allow 10 amps to flow, the same as the top circuit. And the question is how big is RT? Well, RT is the voltage across it divided by the current through it. It's 20 volts divided by 10 amps. It's 2 ohms. So the total resistance of these three resistors, 10, 4 and 6.7 ohms, these three resistors in parallel, the total resistance is 2 ohms. Now, the problem generally is this. If I 
don't know the voltages and currents, but I do know the values of the three resistors, R1, R2 and R3. Is there a way to find the total resistance, RT? So I might know how many ohms each of the separate resistors in parallel is. How do I work out their total resistance, the value of a single resistor I could use to replace them? And the answer is simply this formula. It looks a bit daunting at first sight, but it's not that complicated. The total resistance of three resistors in parallel is simply given by 1 over the total resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Look at that. It's not difficult to memorise. Can you memorise it? It's true for any number of resistors, N. We simply add up the values. 1 over the total is 1 over the first plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third up to 1 over the last. Same formula. Now let's use the formula to see if we can understand it. Here's a circuit. Three resistors in parallel. 1 ohm, 4 ohms, 3 ohms. And I've connected them to a 2 volt supply. Suppose the EMF is 2 volts. Two questions. What's the total resistance? And what's the current through the cell? Now, to get the most out of this, I highly recommend that you pause the video and try this for yourself. I'll give you the answer in a moment. OK, well, let's work out the total resistance first. 1 over RT is 1 over R1 plus the other terms. So 1 over RT is 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. You can do that in, as a fraction if you want, work in twelfth, but most students prefer to work with a calculator, so let me do it that way. It's 1 plus 0.25 plus 0.3 recurring. And I'll just write that down as 0.333. Four decimal places should be enough to avoid rounding errors during the calculation. And it adds up to 1.5833. Now remember, that's the value of 1 over RT. To get RT, I've got to say RT is 1 over 1.5833. And that gives us 0.6. 32 ohms. And it would be sensible to give the final answer to two significant figures because the data in the question is given to two significant figures. So 0.63 ohms. How do we get the current? Well we know the EMF is 2 volts. We've worked out the total resistance 0.63. It's better to use a more accurate value to avoid the rounding errors for this stage. So I'll say RT is 0.632 ohms. I is V over R. The current through the resistor is the voltage, 2 volts, divided by its resistance, 0.632. And the answer to two significant figures is 3.2 amps. And that's the current through the resistor and therefore the same current through the cell. That's basically how we use the formula for total resistance to work out something like this. Where did the formula come from? The formula's on the bottom. 1 over RT is 1 over R1, dot, dot, dot. Let's derive it. Top left circuit shows you three resistors in parallel, R1, R2 and R3. The current through each one is I1 and I2 and I3. The voltage reapplying is V and the current before it splits up is I. What we're trying to do is find the single resistance that has the same effect, the total resistance RT. And if we look at the right hand circuit, this is what we're aiming for. We're aiming to find the resistance RT so that if we use the same voltage we get the same current as we did in the left hand circuit. One useful thing to note about the right hand circuit, because we're going to use the fact in a moment, the current through the right hand circuit I is given by V over RT. Current is voltage over resistance. Now, left hand circuit. Remember Kirchhoff's first law? We can write that the current going into the junction at the top, I, is the current coming out. I1 plus I2 plus I3. What goes in must come out as far as currents. I, we've already worked out, is V over RT. Let's 
put that into the equation instead of i. i, we write v over rt. What about i1? Well, for this first resistor, i1 will be the voltage across it over its resistance. So instead of i1, I can write v over r1. And instead of i2, we write v over r2. And instead of i3, we write v over r3. And if you look at this middle equation, you'll see we can cancel out the v on the top of each term. And that leaves us with our final answer. 1 over rt is 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3. Not difficult. You might want to pause the video and just look through that to make sure you understand how we got there. OK, some useful tips about using the about the resistance of resistors in parallel. First tip, the total resistance is always smaller than the smallest resistor. So if you have three resistors, one ohm, two ohms and three ohms, the smallest resistor is one ohm. The total resistance of those three in parallel is going to be less than one ohm. Notice that's the opposite way around compared to resistors in series. For resistors in series, the, the total resistance is always bigger than the largest re single resistor. Here's another tip. Suppose you've got two resistors in parallel. Well, the mathematics allows us, you can work through this yourself, you can pause the video and look at the al algebra if you want, but the total resistance of two resistors in parallel you can work out quickly by multiplying the resistors together and dividing by the sum of the resistances. That's a quick way to get the resistance of two resistors in parallel. But it doesn't work for more than two. You can't multiply R1, R2, R3 and divide by R1 plus R2 plus R3. That doesn't work. The algebra is not right. Try it for yourself if you don't believe me. Another useful tip. A lot of students work out 1 over RT correctly and then they just forget the last bit. To get RT you need to work out 1 over your answer for 1 over RT. You've got to invert the answer for 1 over RT. Here's another handy one. Suppose you've got two equal resistors R and R. Then the total resistance of them, if they're in parallel, is just half R. So if you've got, for example, two 15 ohm resistors in parallel, the total resistance is 7.5 ohms. And you can apply the same principle for larger numbers of resistors. If you had three equal resistors in parallel, then the total resistance is a third, R over 3. So three 10 ohm resistors in parallel. Total resistance is 3 and a third, 3.3 ohms. That's it. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's useful.